ESPN 94.1 FM at AM 930 present The Drive. It is Tuesday, May 2nd. Your drive begins now at ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. We are going to be taking your text this hour, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. You can also find me on Twitter, at Paul Swan. We've got a lot to get into today, a lot more from the transfer portal. We've got signings to talk about. We also will be speaking with Marshall Volleyball Coach Ari Agnes. She's coming up at 530 We were going to talk Marshall women's basketball with head coach Kim Stevens. She had a prior engagement. She couldn't make the show today. So she's going to come on tentatively on Friday. So we'll be speaking with the head coach of the Marshall women's basketball team. And we've got more to talk about with her when we do get a chance to to talk to her for a few minutes. Because today, it was officially released through Marshall's social media accounts that Marshall University has signed Timberland Yeast. She was a commit of the University of Buffalo. She's from Mercer County. And she was a basketball and track star there. She commits to Marshall after being released from the University of Buffalo. She suffered a left knee injury just before her senior year at Mercer County. And so she missed the entire season. But if you look back at her history, what she was able to do, despite that injury, she played in 134 games, scored over 2,100 points, and had 1,000 rebounds throughout her high school career. And as I mentioned, she did originally commit to the University of Buffalo, but she changed her mind due to a variety of factors. Uh, There were some departures of players from the team, so sort of a shakeup. Things were changing there. Was it what she wanted to be a part of or what she thought she had signed up for? So she is released from the University of Buffalo, and now she's going to be playing for the Thundering Herd. So we'll talk to Coach about that on Friday. Hopefully we'll get some more signings, a couple other nuggets uh, that will come out before we get a chance to talk to her. Uh, Speaking of transfer portal and... There have been a few more items come out today. First of all, yesterday, Marshall University redshirt freshman defensive lineman C.J. Miller entering the transfer portal. So there's another departure. But we also have some good news. Former Stephen F. Austin wide receiver Daryl Simmons, according to social media, is going to join the Thundering Herd for his final season. Looking at him in 2022, he had 23 receptions for 249 yards and one touchdown. And in 2021, just to show you some progression, he had 15 receptions for 106 yards and two touchdowns. So hopefully there's a little bit more upside on him. But that's, again, according to social media, his account, that he is joining the Thundering Herd. Staying with social media announcements just for a moment. Transfer tight end Cade Conley, according to social media, receiving an offer to play for the Thundering Herd. He is a freshman tight end who played for the Central Michigan Chippewas, is what I found out about him. Uh, six foot four, weighed 240 pounds, had um, 11 receptions for 168 yards. And the 2022 season averaged 15.3 yards per reception. Recently entering the transfer portal and now receiving a Marshall offer. So if that if that holds, how many Marshall how many tight ends will I haven't done the, the math recently? How many tight ends does Marshall have? I don't think they're all going to be tight ends, but stack it up that position, right? And you know what? That's okay. I'm sure the depth chart is going to be adjusted based on need and where players fit. But that's what we've got coming off social media from Transfer Portal News. 
Bad news today for baseball fans. Marshall University's baseball team needing to um, pray for no rain because, unfortunately, the game today in Charleston against Virginia Tech canceled due to impending weather, so that game's not going to be rescheduled. The game in Blacksburg has been moved up to 4 p.m. That's tomorrow. It was going to be a 7 o'clock game. That's moved up now to 4 p.m. I don't know if that's going to alter any travel plans for anyone wanting to head to Blacksburg to maybe catch a little thundering herd baseball, but no game today in Charleston. Game tomorrow moved up to 4 p.m. from its original 7 p.m. start. That's the only bad thing about the weather we've been experiencing so far. I thought this was supposed to be, what, we're in spring now? Weather's been schizophrenic, has it not? Thankfully, I don't think we've been impacted too bad as far as softball's concerned. I don't think we've lost too many games, but you know, losing that Virginia Tech game, that's a that's going to sting a little bit. You were hoping that Marshall would have a good showing in Charleston for that one. So that's sort of a look at what's happening uh, across the board. Football signings, basketball signings. We've got baseball action coming up tonight. We've got to tell you about the Pirates are opening up a series tonight at 640 at Tampa Bay. The game right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Yesterday, the Padres beat the Reds 8-3. to Game two of that series coming up tonight at 940. Guardians beat the Yankees 3-2. to Game two tonight at 705 at Yankee Stadium. And... The Charleston Dirty Birds opening up a series tonight at High Point. We're going to talk more Dirty Birds baseball tomorrow here on the program. We have a uh, usually a scheduled guest from the Dirty Birds on Wednesday, so uh, we'll have that for you tomorrow. We'll get an update on what's happening with the Dirty Birds. So that's a rundown of some of the things that are happening. We've got Ari Agnes coming up in about 15 minutes. We're going to talk to her, the Thundering Herd volleyball coach agreeing to a contract extension through 2027. So we'll talk about that. Also, we'll get your text in. Don't forget, the text line is open 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. So hit that text line. We'll talk to you when we come back from the break. I'm your host, Paul Swan. This is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back. It's the Tuesday, May 2nd edition, The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Text line this hour is 304 304- 396 talk. That's 304 396 8255. One transfer portal item that we got to update you on. It seems that a former Tennessee punter has committed to the Thundering Herd. Colby Morgan adding his name to the Thundering Herd roster. So, uh, an addition there. We're going to one day hopefully have a final roster with everybody that's new. We'll hopefully have that. Today's not that day, but we're now, according to social media, adding a punter from Tennessee, Kobe Morgan. Text lines 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. That's our number to be a part of today's edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. And about 10, 12 minutes, we're going to welcome to the program Ari Agnes, Marshall's volleyball coach, the Thundering Herd, giving her a contract extension. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to catch back up with her and talk about her plans for the next several years as her contract extension. And it's not just for her ability to coach. Uh, She's done a lot of other important work on behalf of Thundering Herd in the athletic department. So we'll talk to her about that. And we'll get your text in. 304-396-TALK. 304-396-8255. 
So today's the last day. I'll probably mention the Stanley Cup playoffs. No, who am I kidding? Uh, last night, I was flipping back and forth watching NBA and NHL playoffs. Uh, in the NBA last night, the uh, 76ers beat the Celtics 119-115 to take the 1-0 series lead. The Nuggets beat the Suns 97-87. Denver leads that series two games to none. Miami at New York tonight, 7.30. He lead early, one nothing. And then I think the series we're all interested in and want to keep an eye on, the Lakers at Golden State. Game one tonight, that's at 10 o'clock. For those of you staying up late, should be a good one. Lakers and Golden State, you can't go wrong, especially with Steph and LeBron. It's definitely one of the signature series. Doesn't matter how good the Lakers and Golden State are are depending on the year that's a signature series it's back when i was a kid and it was lakers celtics for me i mean that was the championship game you always look for lakers versus celtics to the point that ea got smart and started making the basketball game and it was lakers versus celtics and then it was basically the title of the game and we're talking what I think the uh, Super Nintendo here, the Sega Genesis. You know, we had uh, Lakers versus uh, Trailblazers, Bulls, Trailblazers. You know, we had different variations on that, going back a ways. So um, that's a fun one. If we were making a video game today, I don't think we would name it this, but it would be cool if we would name the video game Lakers versus Warriors. Game one tonight. That should be a good showcase for the uh, NBA on the NHL side. Round one, game seven, saw New Jersey to beat the Rangers four to nothing. So the Devils win that series four to three. And I saw where it was just right behind the NBA. The NBA led all the cable programming as far as how many people were watching all cable programming. NBA led first two spots, but right behind was the NHL game. So that has got to mean a lot for ESPN and Turner Sports making that investment. And I think you're seeing growth for both the NBA and the NHL. But NBA still leads that argument right now. Tonight, second round openers, Florida's at Toronto at 7. Seattle taking on Dallas tonight at 9.30. And uh, that's a look at what happened in the NHL and the NBA playoffs. We'll get your text in, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Still to come, we're going to hear from Ari Agnes. We'll talk to her about her extension with the Thundering Herd. And after that, we're going to talk about the college football playoff. The game dates for 2024 and 2025 are here. And here's what you need to know. The field of 12 is going to be comprised of the six conference champions ranked highest by the selection committee and the six highest ranked other teams. So if Marshall is the highest ranked conference champion of the group of five, Marshall is going to get a bid to this thing. So that's what we're looking for here to get the program to the point where you can win. Conference championships matter. Conference championships matter. Also, the four highest ranked conference champions will be seated one through four, and each will receive a first round bye. We've got the schedule. We'll break it down for you. We'll do that. Also, congratulations to Marshall senior golfer Tyler Jones, named third team all Sun Belt Conference selection. So, We've got a lot to get into. Here is the text line at 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Has an offensive lineman ever won the National Football League Rookie of the Year? I think Darnell Wright could be the first, if not. That's a good question. We're going to have to research that. I don't remember if an offensive lineman has won Rookie of the Year. Yeah, it usually goes to the explosive players, right? Quarterback, wide receiver, running back. Usually goes to uh, some of those 
positions. I don't think I have recalled an offensive lineman being rookie of the year. So that's a good question. And Darnell Wright could be the first, Texture says. So we'll have to store that one in our little notebook and make sure that we come back and visit it. You can jump in as well, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. We'll take our break early because we want to get Ari Agnes with us. And we're going to talk to her. When we continue with this edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Tuesday, May 2nd edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. A few days ago, we found out that Marshall's volleyball coach, Ari Agnes, has agreed to a contract extension through 2027. I hope she held out for a lot of money. She joins us now on the program. Tell me you held out for a lot of money, Coach. (laughs) I am happy to be here. Absolutely nothing to do with that. We want to be here, so it's, it's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. What was it that made you decide, you know what, I want to continue to be here. Let's just go ahead and get this on paper now. Let's let everyone know that I am here. I am part of the herd. I think the, I think the better question is what, what would keep you from not wanting that? Um, I, the, everything that's happened here in four years, it, you know, building a program isn't just come in, win a couple of games and, and move on. Um, it's, building and taking time and and we've laid the foundation of our culture without championships without you know we've had success I think I'm 37 and 31 um so there's definitely been success on the court but the bigger successes are off the court and I when I look at it it's like dang like it's rolling like it's absolutely rolling so for me this is this is where we want to be this is where myself my family we want to fully be. I think so many people understand that, you know, that listen to this show, they understand what it means to be a part of the Marshall family, but it is so not normal. It is so not what so many of my colleagues have at their universities. It's not the support, the care, the drive. So it was an absolute no brainer. It's, you know, my heart and my husband's heart and and my family's heart. This is where we want to be for sure. Now I'm not asking this for uh, self-service, you know, (laughs) this question, this isn't self-serving. But is the attention, you think, paid less at um, other universities from, say, the community, members of the media, just everyone involved? Do you feel that Marshall has gotten an advantage there when it comes to all of those extra things that, you know, are outside of what it means to be a volleyball coach running a volleyball program? Absolutely. I've got, you know, I've got friends in different states that, that would kill just to have somebody care about their program and talk about it on the radio and care about their camps or ask questions or have the, you know, the coaches tours that we have. So it's, it's absolutely the difference maker. And it, it's, you know, the players, we want them to all feel like they're everything that this is their experience. This is their, the top thing at this university. And that's for every student athlete in every sport. Well, the coaches should feel that too. And then it empowers you to want to do well, right? Like I want to do well. So I know that we can come on this show and we can talk about it and have a good time. And it's, it's every little piece of the community is such a part of each program that it's, it, again, it's just, it's, I have yet to find it anywhere else. I have yet to talk to anybody where these things happen. So we are definitely at a huge advantage. Ari Agnes is with me signing a contract extension through 2027 with the thundering herd and you know, when we got the press release, you know, it had the highlights of, you know, what makes Ari Agnes special. And I don't think we needed a press release to point out how much the volleyball team has been in the community and trying to – you're not doing things just to show up and be seen. I No. I relayed the story the first time I, I really got a chance to meet you – you showed up at one of our radio station events. It was Safe Trick or Treat. The entire squad was dressed up in Halloween costumes. <laughs> it's just what we do. You know, I think that what's cool is I ask our girls, I'm like, I know you, I know we volunteer a lot. They're, all, they're like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but it, it makes for such good experiences. And all of them, as much as they, 
may want to gripe or they may have an opinion. It's it's one moment of that, and then they look back, and then they post all of these pictures of all of these people that they've gotten to meet or things that they've gotten to do. So we don't do it for social media. We don't do it for any accolades. We don't do it for to be seen. We do it because it's the right thing to do. And I've always tried to lay firm into this, this group and the culture of martial volleyball that you do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. You don't do something to check a box. You don't do something – so that somebody congratulates you, you do it because you're giving back. We want people to come to our games. We need to get out there. We want people to support us. We need to get out there 10 times more than what we would expect. So that if they give half of that, it's, it's above and beyond. What are you most proud of in the community so far? Wow. Um, I'm honestly proud of how people see our program. Um, I think that anybody that I talk to, they are so kind about how good of human beings that we have that that's that's everything I need I I can walk to anybody and I know any player that they meet on my team they're going to have a positive experience with them and that's because those that have come before have set the standard for that and I think that that's just where your heart grows really big and that's why we do this right and we can finagle the volleyball piece we can figure those things out but they've got to feel seen and heard and and noticed and then and then those other things will start to follow to go with that theme with your community outreach, who has been impacted most over the last few years on your squad from that community outreach? You know, I think Olivia Fogo. Um, I think from, from start for her to get here, there's, there's a kind of, she, you know, she's had a, I don't even want to say a rough go, but she had to kind of figure out how to be a really good teammate. You know, I think that when you're a perfectionist, which she is, she's a 4.0 student. She's, you know, going to be very successful in whatever she, she wants to do. But with perfectionism comes this, it has to be perfect in everything all the time. Um, and I think that for her, she is, you know, she works for Big Green. She's in the community and she has seen firsthand what it means and heard the stories from the community of what it means for student athletes to be out there. Um, so I think because she's had that, I think definitely her. Um, I also think that Essence Clerkley and Lydia, you know, they're JUCO kids that when you come from JUCO, there's not a lot of foundation in the community necessarily. So them to be able to give back. And I always see the two of them. They're such, um, role models for so many young women in this community that I think that that has impacted them in ways that, that I'm so happy about that. I don't think would have had they gone to another university. Our Agnes is with us, the head coach of the Marshall women's volleyball team, the Thundering Herd extending her contract through 2027. And community outreach is definitely a big part of what makes you a special coach for the Thundering Herd. So I'll ask that question in a, a different way. Where have you seen the most impact from your community outreach? Uh, that's a great question. I think... I think the diversity of our outreach, so I don't think it's just one thing. We do so many different things because anytime anybody will call, you know, um, Coach Chapman with football always tries to include us because we've just kind of gotten this great relationship where our girls will always do it, right? And we've given back to the Jessica Kern Foundation. We've um, volunteered at anything, anything we can get our hands on. So to me, the biggest benefit is the diversity of what our team can see of what giving back means. I think sometimes we think it means just donating money or, um, you know, just throw in a couple of dollars as opposed to like physically, we went to the Ronald McDonald house and moved beds, like physically doing things because we can and because we're able. And so this makes their job 10 times easier for the people that they're helping on a day-to-day -day basis. So I really think it's that I, that the diversity, it's not just one specific community outreach thing and then that gets us to, to meet so many beautiful human beings in the community Ari Agnes is with us and so the the press release obviously highlights the fact that you've taken a leadership role with the community outreach you know was that just organic naturally for you or was that something that was deliberate on your part um I think when you know in 2019 when I got here I, I think it was definitely deliberate, but I think it was because to me that was it's just what you do. Um, so it wasn't deliberate in the sense of we have to meet this mark, we have to get this many hours, we have to do something. It's we, this is a special place. It's a special community. So if we don't get out there, our team doesn't get to see how special it is. Our team doesn't get to be a part of how special it is. And 
So it was just, okay, we've got to come up with how many for all these different things. And it allowed me being new to meet so many different people. So now, you know, we can go to those same things that we did four years ago, and then they know somebody, so we can go somewhere else, or somebody that we know knows somebody that needs something done or that we can help with. So I think it's it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's such a small community. You should be able to get to know everybody, or at least different facets of everyone. So I think that definitely deliberate, but it, it's just, again, it's because it's the right thing to do. Ari Agnes, my guest, Marshall University Volleyball Coach, signing an extension through 2027, so... Up next for you is volleyball played on a new TerraFlex floor, and ticket sales are now available. There are courtside tickets for the first time now. Uh, What is that going to look like once fans take advantage of it? Walk me through that so people maybe don't know exactly what's happening with the volleyball uh, surface and and the configuration of seats. What's that going to look like? Um, you know, it's honestly, if you, if you have the funds, get the tickets, it's going to be a really cool experience. It's going to be first class. Um, it's, 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 a, it's the same as basketball. It's court side. It's sitting on the side, being able to be right up there live in the action. Um, the TerraFlex is a rubber floor that gets put down that has a little bit of give. So it's like an inch and a half, not super thick. Um, but, you know, it, A, it saves the basketball court. There's no volleyball lines with tape anymore. And I think it, it lets basketball be a basketball floor and volleyball be a volleyball floor. And it rolls out. We've got an amazing facilities crew that, that spends a lot of time and effort getting the floor rolled out, and put down, and put perfectly. But it, it takes our program to the next level. Um, being a mid-major and having a TerraFlex is a game changer. There's almost every school, and we're not quite there, but almost every school in the Sun Belt, has a TerraFlex floor. So, you know, we're com- you have to go with what you're competing with in the conference and you have to be ahead of it a little bit. So, you know, we are ahead of it because the, you know, Texas State doesn't have one. Coastal doesn't have one. Um, Georgia State, you know, I'm lying. Maybe they have one. We haven't been there yet. Um, so I think that it's, it's something that puts us ahead of everybody else. And it also gives us a chance to compete at the level and give our student athletes that experience that, you can come mid-major, we can do really big things, and we can be the next elite level. And, and you have to start. It ha- if you build it, they will come, right? If you, if you build it, if you have the things, the student-athletes will follow that we need. The, the kids will follow that, that can put the ball away consistently. And I think that you've got to give them that top-tier experience first, and then the rest kind of follows. Ari Agnes, my guest, the Thundering Herd, extending her contract through 2027. So now that we have got uh, more opportunities for fans to uh, enjoy volleyball at the Henderson Center, uh, the next thing you get to do is go out on the Big Green Coaches Tour. You're going to be doing that over the next few weeks. How difficult is it, or is it difficult for the other coaches to try to maybe compete with your energy? Because uh, you, you go to these I things. Would, gosh, I would honestly think it's got to be really hard for them. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sure that I'm sure that Coach Huff knows his his place when it He's comes. He's got to know. He He's knows his know. place, right? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for sure, for sure. But you have the new you know have the new basketball coach. Does she does she understand? She is awesome. She, you know. I I think she's got it though. She's got the energy. She's got the the it. You know what I mean. So she definitely fits right in with with all of these unbelievable coaches we have here. You're going to Cincinnati as well. That's going to be fun. I am. I am this weekend. Very excited. I love Cincinnati. It's a great city. You know, I'm not a city person, so I like to visit them and come right back home. Um, but it's a great time. And there's so many of us, there's like, what, seven of us going eight is eight, eight of us going that it's really cool. I love what big green does. I love how we're able to meet people firsthand. We just did one in Ashland, uh, last week, I believe. And it was awesome. There were so many people and to just be able to put like them to hear me, they've, they've never met me. Right. So to be able to just hear what we're about, hear what we're doing, um, hopefully they just, you know, understand and, and support us however they can, whether that's watching games online or coming to matches. It's, it's an awesome experience for us to be able to meet the community that's not just right here in Huntington, um, the alumni of every, you know, in every city. It's awesome. It's really, really cool. You're going to be hanging out with Christian Spears. You've got Coach Huff scheduled. You have Dan D'Antoni scheduled. You have Kim Stevens scheduled. 
you have Michael Swan scheduled and Matt Grove scheduled. So, and you're you're the master of ceremonies, right? Absolutely. There's there's no question about that. It's awful nice of them to come support you at your at your big green That's event. What I'm saying. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. I think it's very nice, very now, kind. Are you golfing as well at the <laughs> uh, at the? Uh, no. So I learned uh, very quickly that when I'm not good at something, I just stop. It's really bad. It's a really horrible attitude to have, but that's my attitude. So I'm very bad at golf, and instead of getting angry, I just don't do it. Wait a minute. So. If you're not good at something, you just stop. Yes, absolutely. But then how do you translate that to if someone on your because squad? Because I'm good at volleyball and they're good at volleyball. They're not learning something new, right? So it's a whole sport. I can't. Look, there's like, you have to have patience for golf. It's slow. It is the exact opposite that volleyball is. Okay, I just want to make sure you're staying Doesn't, consistent here. Because, you know, you're... Uh, very consistent. Very consistent. You know, I'll... I'll I'll learn some new things. I'm okay with that. But when it comes to like me losing, I can't handle it. So I'm just not going to put myself in a position to get very, very angry and come out a loser. Because I definitely would lose. When do you write your self-help book? I just want to know that next. <laughs> help me help you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That would have been the title of my book. Help me help you. <laughs> So you and I are on the same page. That's the title Absolutely. of my book. Help, And I say that to people. Help me help you. Exactly. Yep. Hey, help me help you. Absolutely. Ari Agnes is with us. Uh, I appreciate you doing this. Uh, when I saw the contract extension, uh, that was a perfect excuse to get you back on because uh, I'm a huge believer of what you do, not just on the court, but the, with the program, the community. And so I appreciate you coming back and doing this again. And uh Hopefully, um, you'll get a whole bunch of other fun things that we can talk about here in the near future. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Ari Agnes, my guest, her contract going through 2027. We will get your text in 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. I can't wait for a book. That's, that's the title of my book, Help Me Help You. More coming up. It's The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Tuesday, May 2nd edition. This is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Our text line this hour, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. I love it sometimes when our listeners ask a question and then they do the research for us and share. Earlier in the program, we had a texter ask if an offensive lineman ever won the National Football League Rookie of the Year and offered their thoughts that they think Darnell Wright could be the first, if not. And the texter did my research for me, did the homework, looked it up, says that the Only one offensive lineman named NFL Rookie of the Year, 1990 Miami Dolphins offensive tackle, Richmond Webb. I don't even remember that. I absolutely do not remember that. So that answers the question. I think we'll uh, remember Darnell Wright if he wins Rookie of the Year. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. That's the number to be a part of tonight's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. We're always taking your text throughout the show. It's the quickest way most days to get through to me. You can also find me on Twitter. I'm pretty active most days at Paul Swan. There are those days. I can't be tweeting all the time, but there are those days where I'm a little bit more active than others. Today was a pretty active day on Twitter. A lot of things happening. So you can find me there at Paul Swan, and we'll post show updates, we'll post the podcast, we'll post the things that are happening that we know about, and we'll do that on a daily basis for the most part, and you can be a part of it, again, at Paul Swan on Twitter. So we were talking about earlier the college football playoff making the announcement for game dates. That's important because now we know when this thing's going to be. And just a refresher, college football playoff, will be a 12-team playoff format set to begin in 2024. The field of 12 teams will be compromised of the six conference champions ranked highest by the selection committee and the six highest ranked other teams. So if you have a conference champion 
and the Sun Belt that is ranked higher than all the other group of five teams, more than likely that conference champion is going to be among the six. So I think what this does is unless there's – honestly, unless – there are two conference champions from group of five schools that are ranked higher than maybe a power five or two. That could happen. So we'll see what happens there, but at least this opens up more access. There's going to be 12 teams, the six highest ranked conference champions, along with the six highest ranked other teams. The four highest ranked conference champions will be selected for first round buys, one through four. And kickoff will um, will be set here in the near future. First round going to be on campus in 2024. Friday, December 20th, one game in the evening. Friday, December 20th, 2024. Saturday, December 21st, 2024, three games, early afternoon, late afternoon, and evening. Quarterfinals, Tuesday, December 31st, 2024, Fiesta Bowl. Wednesday, January 1st, 2025, the Peach Bowl, that's going to be in the early afternoon, the Rose Bowl game, that's going to be in the late afternoon, and the All-State Sugar Bowl, that's going to be in the evening. And then the semifinals will be Thursday, January 9th, 2025, that's going to be in the Orange Bowl and the evening. And then on Friday, January 10th, the Cotton Bowl Classic is going to be an evening game. And then the national championship will be played on Monday, January 20th at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Georgia, in Atlanta. That's the schedule for 2024. They've got the schedule set for uh, the 25th as well. But the one thing you probably need to know is the championship is going to be at uh, Hard Rock Stadium in 2026 for the 2025 season. So we're one step closer to an actual playoff, and that's going to open the door now. Not necessarily will you have to be just a Power 5 school to get a shot at a national championship. So Marshall could win the Sun Belt. Win the Sun Belt. Be the highest-ranked Sun Belt champion ever. Be the first one in this thing, right? I think I heard Christian Spears say that, or at least he said that somewhere, that Marshall would be uh, the first Sun Belt team to be in this thing. But now the work has been uh, laid out here. Marshall's got to win a conference championship to be considered for this. And Marshall's got to look good doing it. Get the style points in here, right? Could you imagine if this thing was around? If this thing was around when Marshall was entering 1A with Bobby Pruitt as the head coach, could you imagine? Could you imagine every year Marshall playing in this thing? Absolutely. Marshall would have definitely had a legitimate shot at making this thing, if not every year, close to every year, back in the 90s. I know we can't live in the 90s, but... Imagine what this system would have looked like years ago to afford this opportunity and Marshall being a very dominant team in the 90s, dominating the MAC under the coach of, uh, of, of legend for a lot of you, coach of renown, Bob Pruitt. Imagine what this would have looked like here and Marshall would have been in it. So I think there's a, a lot to be said. It gives everyone an opportunity. You can't say that you don't have an opportunity now. And the parameters are set. The six highest ranked conference champions get a shot at this. So how do I get in? Well, you got to win a conference championship. And then you got to be one of the highest ranked conference champions. You got to be in the top six. So you better win with some style. You better be dominant. You better be one of the best teams. If you've got a, let's say, and a let's say a one-loss Sun Belt team as the champion versus maybe a two-loss MAC team or a two-loss American team, you know, it'll make for some interesting debate. 
Marshall has a legitimate shot now at the playoff. That's what the system does. Is it perfect? No. Is it what we have? Yes. And I think it's a step in the right direction for college football. These bowls are still part of the system. And I absolutely hope that this becomes the most relevant form of postseason football in college. I would love to see the bowl system fade away. Absolutely would love to see the bowl system fade away. It's not going to, but that's going to make those games a little less meaningful. This is what you're shooting for. This is what you want to be. That's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for tuning in. I want to thank Ari Agnes, the head coach of the Marshall Volleyball team. We appreciate her coming on, talking a little bit more about her contract extension and, of course, highlighting what she does for the university. Thanks for tuning in to today's edition of Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Have a great night, everyone. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington. This is your radio home for Pittsburgh Pirates baseball, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.